Okay. Now. This. I'm curious to go here first. Ridiculous, I know. A scheduled service and or a scheduled service in the ship's chapel was interrupted by the most profane manner. Images of saints and martyrs depicted on the altarpiece started to move and stepped down from the canvas. The congregation was filled with terror and dozens perished in the stampede. Illusion disappeared on its own, but it claimed several priests and the altar attendants. It is said their frenzied shrieks can still be heard echoing in the vaults of the chapel during prayer. Lovely. Okay. So. I could. We got six to play with. To make that safe would be a three. I could do it for a four and make it medium safe. Um. And then, and then hope that it connects me here. Or. Hmm. Hmm. And this didn't connect. So that, that is an option. Let's quick save. Let's go here and handle this. I think that that might be what I do. But I don't know. We'll, we'll see. A uh, fire broke out in one of the decks during the warp voyage. The raging disaster consumed the entire chamber, destroying precious car. No! Few people claimed the soot on the plasteel beams formed lines in cryptic alien language not known to humans. The delirious workers were executed and bodies disposed of. Okay. Well, that happens. I probably should have done this first and then saved some of the crew, but that's fine. An event occurred and... Oh, okay. This. Uh, I bring woeful news. Prelate Heck Darkus of the Order of Hammers passed away. Immediately after the launch of the Orbital Vox Spire, he entered the halls of recording and having sat on the command throne was granted a vision. For over three days, the Prelate Heck Darkius preached about Saint Cognatus being reincarnated in a body made from the saint's own holy relic. The spiritual feat depleted the prelate's strength, and he peacefully departed from the emperor's throne shortly after the sermon's conclusion. The order's elders believe this to be a sign that Saint Cognatus' relics, currently stored on the planet throughout the expanse, must be brought together. The order is preparing for an elec the election of a new prelate under whose guidance it will undertake this holy mission. The majority of the votes are divided between Prioress Luganila, well known for her fervor, and the merciful Celerar Tykin. The minority of the order sees the Okinomos Nigmus, a humble and reasonable man as their prelate. Um, companions. I have sympathy for Prioress. Uh, let her meet with Reverend Harmonious on footfall. Should he accept her as a worthy leader, we ought to support her. Careful, sensible, sounds like a safer bet. The voices say that he has few paltry secrets and knowledge of those secrets guarantee us his loyalty. Uh, brother Tyken, uh, he and I have met back when he was called Tyken Drivestem. Wait, Drivestem? Aren't those some of the nobles on my planet? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He's related to the governor. An honorable young man uh, with a spark in his eyes. His ascension would mean much to the Drivestems. Um... Hablard, see to it, or Adira... I need a little obedient prelate. Oh, uh, if he approves of her. Hmm. Honestly, if ever, like, if I don't know, my, like, if Harmonious is like, yeah, she's good, then I feel like Reverend Harmonious would know better. So I'm going to go with that. Uh, Reverend Harmonious arrives on Fowlstone, and he met with the Prioress. After a confession and a philosophical discussion in private, he acknowledged that uh, as being a worthy of high ecclesiastical station guaranteed hers. Okay. She's been chosen as the prelate, faithful militia to... Okay. Excellent. Fantastic. Oh, uh. Uh, no. Where? There's devastation. Where is there devastation? Okay. My presence is... Lord Captain, we received a report from Dark Gonus. Some common folk from the now ruined uh, have succumbed to oh, heresy of defiance. Forming into Engine Vandal's gang, they now ride among the wasteland of the wasteland adapted cleaning Goliath. They have declared themselves outside the law. 
Bereft of the grace of shelter, uh, they are willing to do anything to prolong their fleeting lives under the open sky. They curse your ladyship's apparent cruelty. Rumor has it that the uh, clan in charge keep in contact. We could pass on your words to the renegades via them or force them to disclose the location. Advisors? If the engine vandals have managed to tame the ancient machine spirits, that means they are technomats or even tech priests among the ranks. That renders them negotiable. It would be efficient to utilize such renegades instead of disposing of them. A promise of reward for every piece of tech found in the wasteland. Okay. If you wish to exterminate them, Ellen talks, do not waste your time on hunting them down. Instead, deceive them into defeating each other with a prize, a weapon, or a trophy. After the monkey are finished slicing each other up for their right to obtain it, your warrior shall finish the deed. This tactic proves to be... Honestly, that's not bad advice. The aristocrats of Dargonis despise them, but are also secretly afraid of them, correct? Renegades can invoke such fear. I wonder if I had exiles like this on my home, would they have curbed the ambitions of my brothers and sisters? Would they have supported me in the case of conflict? Oh, I am scheming and conspiring right now, am I not? Oh. Uh, bravo, Lady Cassia. Do not be ashamed of the unique abilities bestowed upon your heritage. They are your birthright. <gasps> so he, I kind of like that. Yeah, Cassie is right. We should help them and give the aristocrats a real threat to keep them in their place. I am still naive even of, of even the basics in these games played by powerful, but my intuition tells me this is the winning strategy. Yes. Having received weapons and information, they slaughtered several brash and troublesome aristocrats. Ooh. <laughs> we all know I'm not a huge fan, or Tess isn't even a huge fan of the Noibles, so this is a, a definitely a win-win for everybody. All right, y'all, let's hope the the person in charge of this now gives us what we need because I am A, terrified of her, but B, terrified of her. So let's go. This should be interesting. I hope. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go. Cutting the line because I am the rogue trader. A new challenge for me. If I can't cut the line, who can? You know? Okay. I'm back. Master of Ah, Tessera von Valencius, you've returned. I hope the sacred document I entrusted to you the last time has now successfully passed through the approved procedure. Uh, here is your paper complete with seals. The ocular lens on the old woman's nose emits a subtle hum as she adjusts the magnification. Oh, yes, indeed. It's perfect. The seals are authentic, so we may continue with the certification procedure. Please follow me. What? Where are we going now? Uh, oh. Oh? I'm very confused now. What is this? Oh, no. N no, 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 no. I can't wait in line. I got Mara's eye to kill. Flirt with. Same thing. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. This is your cue and your ticket number is the old woman's ocular lens hums as she zooms in on the paper. 394. When it's your turn to be seen, the ranking prefect will review your documentation again and sign the official certification for Jai Hadari to possess uh, the Mercatum Tabula Officiale. You will have a bit of a wait, but it'll be worth it in the end. Yes? Um... <sighs> is this some kind of joke? The master seals peers at you over her ocular lens. Hardly. In accordance with decree DA-58, clause 201, citizens of the capital world of the Von Valencia's protectorate must submit their petitions to one of the assigned windows of the waiting hall. The decree makes no mention of rogue trader being exempt from this rule. I am the rogue trader. I do not queue. Under the Lex Imperialis, your right and privileges as rogue trader come into effect only after your official ascension. Until then, you are just another humble subject. Oh no. Um, like, on one hand, I want to say this, but on the other hand, I kind of want to know what happens. If I must queue, then I shall queue. Then I bid you good day. May the law and the emperor keep you. How long are we queuing for? 
Um. Wait. Um. What? What? Somebody help. Take your place in the queue. Oh my gosh. I'm like, I'm almost enamored by how long this... I got three terrifying children right now. Good. The queue hums with thousands of voices. Someone is rolled out bedding and is settling down to sleep. Someone is playing some bizarre musical instrument. Many are praying. Several highborn uh, petitioners are debating who is here on the most important business. You have to admit the magnificent administra uh, administrative machinery of the Imperium isn't without its rough edges. Jai smiles, sheepishly eyeing the queue. But what a thrilling adventure this is turning out to be, Shireen. I've never seen anything like it before. And sometimes it's good to take a break from constant traveling and to give all the hot-blooded newcomers a chance to cover themselves in glory without us in the way. Uh, count the people in the queue. People are constantly moving and coming and going and changing places or simply disappearing from view. On your first attempt, you count 238 petitioners. On your second, you count 244. On your third attempt, the next batch of unlucky souls is ushered into the hall and you lose count. The minutes drag by intolerably slowly. Somewhere in the queue, a child is howling at the top of its lungs. The palace adepts are sedately moving documents from one pile to another, shuffling papers. Several petitioners have gathered in a huddle and are swapping rumors, while some have laid down for a nap on a nearby bench. You have wild away 30 seconds of your wait. You wonder how long you have left to go. Wait patiently. Eight hours. In the last eight hours, the only thing that has changed in the waiting hall is the warden shift. The petitioners in the queue placidly await the blessed hour when their appeal will be heard by the ranking servant of the Imperium. The entire queue perks up at a sudden announcement. Number 285, proceed to the available window. Throne, take me. What a torturous trial have we got let ourselves in for? Jai almost wails in despair. So much precious time lost, and we've only moved three places ahead. At this rate, we'll be old and gray before we get out of the queue. Uh, do you have a better idea? You wound me! Jai always has a better idea. What would you say to making good folk ahead of us hurry up a little? Just a smidge. The simplest way is to make these lowly subjects bow down before the blinding radiance of your title. The second option requires a little more patience. I have already found our first vic <laughs> compassionate citizen who is standing 50 paces ahead of us in the queue. Simply offer the right words to unlock his heart and he'll gladly swap tickets with you. Also, you have the power to solve the problem of some petitioners removing their needs to visit a coveted window. After all, is there anything an ordinary citizen could want that is beyond the power of the conqueror of the stars to grant? Um. All right. We shall solve the problems of the common people. Wise decision. Cold traders always say if you can solve a problem with hard cash, then that's just the cost of doing business. I feel like Tess would want to help people. Jai gives you a conspiratorial wink and backs away. Oh, exalted one, could today be my lucky day? No longer will I have to stand in this hall waiting day and night for my turn to come for this kind lady of House Von Valencius is a benefactor of the downtrodden and she has solved my problem. Is that Argento right there? Esteemed lady, take pity on a poor youth. I will give you everything I have, I swear. Help me solve my problem. We do not need everything, poor wretch, only your place and queue. Uh, let me listen to you. The young man in worn work overalls comforts himself with unusual grace for a commoner. My lady, I've been in this queue for two dozen moons already, trying to get a permission slip to wed my fiancé, Zazi. Unfortunately, the servants of the administratum refused to grant it without a signature of a highborn sponsor. Uh... Out of my way! Elbowing aside onlookers left and right, a richly dressed lady with a beauty mark augment above her lip charges towards you. Esteemed lady, my eighth offspring has lost his mind. He's decided to renounce his family, his noble title, his talent as a healer, all for the sake of some tattered way from the middle levels. A union with the commoner will put an end to his studies at the university. But should Dargonis or uh, the officio uh, medicae be deprived of a capable churgent because of a passing fancy? Zazi is a healer too. She helps the people of the hive great, a great deal more than any lily white churgeon with a diploma. I do not want to live a life of idleness in the spires of Dargonis like you, not when I know that there are thousands of unfortunate people in lower levels who need my help. Um. <laughs> wait, wait. You wish to study alongside your beloved? Very well, I hereby grant you ownership of the Dargonis. <laughs> Mm. 
Um. Oh no, which one do I want to do? I could name her a lady. And then they could decide what they want to do after. Ah, uh, yeah, she's a lady now. The young man spent several opening and closing his book. Th that means our marriage will finally be certified. Zazi will be able to become a, a, a church in two now. I don't know how to thank you. He he please take my place. I'll return later, this time with my fiance. She's a lady now. Enjoy. Tell her the best of luck. It's not easy dealing with nobles. You have an interesting way of doing business. I'll keep that in mind. After allowing you a brief pause, a hunched ragamuffin approaches you. The man's toothless mouth breathes out a putrefying cloud of air as he speaks death for life. Jai peers over the man's shoulder to treat his crumpled form. You're here to request mortification so that your organs go to your granddaughter's an inheritance. She will hardly want your worn out body parts, old timer. S Servitor, disposal. The ragged man shakes his head and covers his face with wrinkled hands. Only now do you notice the tattoo on his right hand, the symbol of the Adeptus Administratum, and several interlocking change. It seems this old fellow is the property of a prefect of the palace. Jai looks at the man's form again and rears back in horror. The granddaughter of this poor wretch was turned into a servitor at 16 Dargonis years ago, and after a recent accident, she was listed for disposal. Now the old man is volunteering to be spare parts for a soulless tin can. May the exalted one keep me from such a fate. I will have my people buy your granddaughter's release and see to your welfare. Uh, you don't have to die if she's already been... No, I'll give the order for your granddaughter to be repaired, but if you wish to be with her forever, you'll also be subjected. No. Um, how dare a prefix property try... N no. Yes. I don't care for losing a profit factor. May the emperor keep you. That was, that was worth it. I love that you get to do this. I actually really like the outcome of this. I'm so glad we waited. Oh, good. There's a cue. Interesting. So that is how the rule of the worlds and all the stars acts when she finds an unfortunate on the edge of her magnificent orbit. Jai nods pensively and beckons the next petitioner forward. A mature woman in finely made but threadbare dress greets you. I heard you were helping those in need. My family is devastated. My life's work, my shop selling rare hats burned to ashes. I'm living out my last years as a widow, alone in a cold, deserted manner without servants diversions or delicacies befitting my status. What? The woman falls silent, brows raised in expectation of your response. Mm. Not losing profit factor to her. Uh, and what you want is a life that is meaningless and full of despair. Perhaps it's time you turn to faith. Uh, <laughs> I suppose you must remarry then. Shall I have my people select the best spouse for you? No, 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 no. Why ever would you? No more husbands or wives. I'm too old for that. All I want to do is enjoy my last few years of life. Um, I could rebuild the hat shop. The woman's eyes spark to life. Why, that's a wonderful idea. Please take my place in queue. Here, I insist. I'll leave my details with your retinue. Okay, good. I didn't lose profit factor on that one. Uh, this person is very much talking to us. Three hours. How far did I make it? Well, that was amusing. I paid off the last few onlookers who were willing to give up their place. It's a pity there aren't, they aren't all so amenable. Jai inspects the tickets she now holds with a nod of satisfaction. We've moved forward considerably in the queue, Shireen, but you aren't ready to stop there yet, are you? I'll be honest. I'd already tried to convince Heinrich to use his interrogator from set with sweet words and pretty songs. I cajoled and wheeled it, but he remains unmoved like a rock whipped by the wings. Perhaps he'll be more amenable from a quest request from you. Sister Argenta, for instance, she could engage the people in a prayer or tell a story about some saint or other in exchange for their queue ticket. Um... Okay, um, do we wait patiently or do we need to move forward? Use your, tr use your tricks. Yeah, use your tricks. Let's see what happens. I prefer to call it my wisdom learned through many years of experience, but I don't care about the precise wording just now. How do you wish to proceed? Um, okay, or... Heinrich, this is a perfect opportunity to make use of your privileged status. After all, you do not wish to suspend your mission for several cycles, do you? Um... War. Sister Argenta, I believe these people have been gripped by despondency. A sermon from one of his daughters could restore their to them. Y yes. But I feel like I feel like with Argenta, like this almost seems wrong because like she wouldn't charge for that. She'd just give the sermon. But for this, it just feels like we're asking. Right, I'm going with Heinrich. 
Casting his eyes over the wing hall, he heaves a resigned sigh. It would be unpardonable to waste so much time here. Yes. Thank you, future Tessera boyfriend. I order you to let this lady through. It is your sacred duty to the Imperium to comply. Why didn't we just do this from the beginning? But apparently I made somebody a noble, rebuilt a hat shop, and bought this guy's freedom for his granddaughter. Emperor, save us. I better come back in 20 moons. Okay. Two hours. Here, is this what you were so desperate to obtain? He holds out three Q tickets dropped by petitioners fleeing at the very side of the interrogator. Do not ask me to resort to such tricks again. We've moved forward considerably, but you weren't ready to stop there, are you? <sighs> Address a tender-hearted man. Hi, I'm the rogue trader. May the emperor illuminate your path, brother. I am Jai, and this is Tessera. We've been in the queue so long already. We're all practically family now. Won't you tell us what brought you to this palace of order? The man starts in surprise. Hey, yes, yes, light of the throne, bless you. My name is Menace, Menace Depri uh, Depire. I have been here a month already. I've tried everything I can to get through to that window. Nothing works. My poor, poor Elena. She's my daughter, my flesh and blood. They detained her on Vebo 6, charged her. Can you believe it? The charges were false. That's how our administratum operates. I've said too much. I do apologize. It's my nerves. My nerves. I just keep thinking about her there on Vebo, shackled down in the mines. My poor, poor Lena. Ah, delicate as a flower she is. She's got weak lungs, you understand. Always coughing. And her down in the mines, all that dust and muck. She won't cope with it. She won't. She was acquitted two years ago. But to get the paper certified at the seal, so much time has passed. And now here I am standing, waiting. It doesn't matter. At the rate this queue's moving, it'll be 10 cycles or more before our number comes up. What was she accused of? Falsely accused. Falsely accused. She was slandered. They said she deliberately poisoned a whole room of highborn folk with cakes. Have you ever heard the likes of it? These nobles didn't even make it as far as the privy. Panic, outrage, scandal, and so what? It was their own fault. That's what a crate of fine Calixian wine was found. <laughs> the smugglers were found too. And what did the smugglers do? They framed someone else and my daughter was charged. Of course, blame the smugglers. Um, no... Uh, I do not think your daughter would mind if you let the rogue trader go ahead of you. I'm sorry about your daughter, but if you do not let me pass tomorrow, 50 Dargonian orphans will... I don't think she'll let mind if you let the rogue trader go. His face... Oh, uh, well, the time... I've been... Oh, of course, of course, it'd be an honor. Please go ahead. Yeah, I don't, I don't think his daughter was innocent. Also, knowing what happened in Vebo 6. Naya, yeah, are you certainly got your own... Yeah, we definitely have our own style. We move forward, but you aren't ready to stop, are you? Okay. Um. Okay. Whatever you're thinking, do it. You do not need to tell me twice. All is fair in love and bureaucracy. What? What? No! Did you hear that? The certification officers will only see petitioners who have a signed number ticket. Thanks be the exalted one. I managed to get one in the next queue over. Okay. This gotta be it, right? I didn't, like, no one told me about any tickets being, si there are seven turns off. <sighs> Can't believe these people thought, all right, these ash mags want to be tricked. I won't stop them. Jai smugly watches the agitated crowd whispering among themselves. We move forward considerably, but you aren't ready to stop here, are you? Um, let's consider everything. <sighs> so is in queue, oh, exa I wish I hadn't looked. We're definitely not going anywhere soon. You need to make a decision. Okay. All right, Argenta. You were thinking about it as well. Argenta's case is clear as midday. Words of faith can heal any wound, even though he's bled not, but doubt. It, I will help these people. I feel bad. We're taking advantage of Argenta's kindness. I'll do anything to move up in the queue. Come closer, brothers and sisters, for I'm about to tell you about the true faith and humility of the face of it in the face of adversity. Y'all, Argenta can talk for days. We just got to pickpocket the right number. As they say on Ifrit, there is no star more coveted than that which points to the exalted one. Jai casts a sidelong glance at the sister of battle as the latter holds out several numbered tickets to you. These were given to me in thanks by the poor souls. Oh, so we didn't have to trick them. That's fine. Uh, to abandon their vigil in this palace of law and return to their worldly matters. 
The hum of activity returns to the queue. Petitioners exchange glances, clutching their paperwork. After a few seconds, you realize that the number being called out by the servitor for the third time is the one in your ticket. Ha, ah, went faster than expected. We had a little bit of a wait, of course, but at times it was actually fun. One last seal, one more certification, and you'll be looking at the official trade representative, Jai Hazari. What are you waiting for? Let's go. We have another couple of hours of certification officer to get through. What? Hours? The certification officer leans over the documents, his smoothly shaven head gleaming. His augmented ocular eye were as the lenses zoom in and out with quiet scratching sound. The cogata quills that serve in the palace of the officer's fingers make note of the on a fine sheet of paper. The document is hereby certified, says the rasping voice through the metal jaw with the integrated box. Return to the master of seals in order to proceed and may his light and wisdom guard you next. I have to go back. I have to go back. I would like to thank everyone for being here for the last day with me. <sighs> okay, Master of Seals, I'm back. The Temple of Law and Order greet you, Tessera Von Valencius. You've returned with all the necessary paperwork, I presume? Y yes. Wonderful! The Emperor blessed you with patience greater than the uh, portion of the ordinary mortal. Allow me to verify the authenticity of your documents for the final time. The old woman holds the documents close so that they are almost touching her nose. Her mechanical ocular lens clicking incessantly. Yes, yes, confirmed. Everything is in order. And this one, ah, the seal is smudged slightly. Void scorpion, scratch out my eyes. What now? Uh, I suppose I can overlook it given the rest has been certified correctly and promptly. Congratulations, Jai Hidari. Oh my gosh, almost because of a smudge seal. Um, you are now the holder of the Mercatum Tabula Officiale. Do not forget to repeat the certification process every 100 Terran cycles. Uphold the law of the Imperium proudly and honorably in the worlds of the Coronas Expanse. And one more thing. Loss of the certificate is a grievous transgression, Mr. Sidari. Lose the original document and you will be unable to regain your status as an official trade representative, not even with the Rogue Trader's endorsement. Yes, yes, esteemed Damar, give me the certificate already. Come on, Jai's eyes start over the Mercatum Tabula Officiale with shine and shine with delight. Praise the exalted one who saw me through all these trials, Shireen. This is something to tell the grandchildren about how a humble mortal became a trade representative of the Imperium. Let's not bother the Damar any longer. Why don't we discuss our next steps on the ship? Thank you very much for hosting the rogue trader, her friends, and her three it's creepy cherubs. Time. Because she's very tired now. Oh, y'all. This, I feel like they really and truly did a great job of showing you what it could be like. If you got to get official stuff done and then just wait and wait and wait in, in a queue and how it just, it just, it just takes forever and there's no end to it. And we don't have a Jai or or Rogue Trader status to, to snap through it all. Whew, I was at, I'm actually really happy, though, that we were able to help a few people. That was very nice of Tess. Tess can be very nice, though, when she wants to be. It's true. 